Hello, if you're into astrophotography, then you might have heard terms like narrowband imaging, narrowband filters, hydrogen alpha filters, HA RGB projections, adding hydrogen alpha signal to your images to enhance nebulosity in the night sky, but I bet not a lot of people fully understand what is going on here. So in this video, I'm gonna dig in deep into what hydrogen alpha light really is, where it comes from, and why is it usually so strong compared to other narrowband channels. And also, why is it so useful for astronomers and astrophotographers? So, let's get to it! So, to understand what's going on here, we need to understand a little bit of quantum mechanics. <laughs> but don't worry, you don't need to be a scientist to understand this. A little bit of quantum mechanics of how light can be absorbed and emitted by atoms. Let's take the hydrogen atom for instance, as it is the simplest atom. A hydrogen atom is just one proton and one electron. And you might be familiar with the concept of an electron orbiting the nucleus of an atom, which in case of hydrogen is just one proton. But it is not what is really actually happening. So in quantum mechanics, we say that the electron can be on some energy level in the atom. It can be on the first energy level, on the second energy level, third, and so on. But due to the laws of quantum mechanics, it cannot be on any arbitrary energy level, sort of in between these two. In order for the electron to jump from a lower energy level to a higher energy level, it needs to absorb a photon of a very specific frequency. A frequency that corresponds exactly to the difference between those energy levels. So the atom cannot just absorb a photon of any frequency, but only those specific ones that correspond to the difference between, for instance, level 1 and level 2, or level 1 and level 3, etc. A reverse process is happening when the electron is jumping down from a higher energy level to a lower energy level. In this situation, the atom is not absorbing a photon, but you guessed it, it's emitting a photon. And just as the atom couldn't absorb any arbitrary photon, it can only emit photons of specific frequencies, wavelengths. A wavelength and frequency of a photon mean different things, but they are tightly connected, so I might just use these terms interchangeably here in this video. So what happens in space is that there's a cloud of gas just hanging out there and near some young stars nearby. These stars are shooting UV photons of higher energy in all directions, and some of them hit this cloud of gas. Gas. The atoms in this gas get excited, meaning that they absorb the UV photons, causing the electrons to jump to higher energy levels, and then they spontaneously relax back down to lower energy levels, emitting other photons. Some of the photons are uh, UV photons again, which we cannot see directly, because UV is not in the visible light spectrum, but some of them are in the visible spectrum, and we can see this gas cloud emitting its own light. Such a gas cloud is called an emission nebula, right? Because it emits its own light, thus it's called an emission nebula. That's pretty a pretty good connection here. So why is there hydrogen in such a gas cloud in space, you might ask? Well, because hydrogen is literally everywhere. It is the most basic element in the universe, consisting of only one proton in the nucleus, uh, and protons were made way back after the universe cooled down enough after the Big Bang so that protons could exist at all. And this hydrogen is the most abundant element in the universe, and it's everywhere. So why the excited hydrogen atoms relax spontaneously emitting photons? Because the universe doesn't like to have high energy densities. If the energy can be spread out, somehow it will. That's just entropy. Okay, so let's look closely at a hydrogen atom. When its electron is on the first energy level, it can absorb UV photons of wavelength of around 100 nanometers, which would cause the electron to jump to higher energy levels, like we discussed. Now, from that higher energy levels, the electron can relax down to the first energy level, which would result in an emission of a UV photon, or it can relax to a second energy level first, and then from the second back down to the first. And it turns out that the jumps from level 3, 4, or higher to the second energy level are emitting photons in the visible light spectrum, or at least a couple of them. And the least energetic and thus probabilist probabilistically the most common transition resulting in an emission of a visible light photon is from the third energy level to the second energy level, which emits 
uh, which, which for hydrogen emits a photon of 656.3 nanometers, which is, drumroll please, the hydrogen alpha emission line. There are other emission lines in the visible spectrum for hydrogen, the hydrogen beta with 486.1 nanometers, hydrogen gamma with 430 four nanometers, etc. But in case, but each of these is less likely to happen because it requires a higher energy level to start from. So the hydrogen alpha is the strongest and the brightest of them all, which gives the emission nebula their distinct red color in the sky. Because again, 656.3 nanometers is in the red area of the visible light spectrum. And how bright something is, is just how many photons you detect from it in a certain period of time. More photons mere that the, means that this stuff appears brighter. And that's why the red hydrogen alpha signal is usually the brightest. So that's where the hydrogen alpha light comes from in emission nebulae. It is emitted by hydrogen atoms where the electrons relax from the third energy level to the second energy level that were previously excited to those higher energy levels by nearby young stars bombarding these clouds of gas with UV radiation. And why is it so helpful and useful for astrophotographers like myself? Because due to the laws of quantum mechanics, we know that all of that light has this one very specific wavelength. So we can design a filter that passes through only this wavelength of light and rejects everything else. And that way we can pierce through light pollution and resolve amazing detail uh, in emission nebulae even from light polluted areas like cities. In reality, such filters are, uh, have a narrow range of wavelengths that they pass through, and the narrower this range is, around 656.3 nanometers, the better the filter is, and of course, the more expensive it is, right? <laughs> there are also other elements in emission nebulae, not just hydrogen. The other common one with a convenient emission line is oxygen, which in its so-called doubly ionized state, it can emit photons of 500.7 nanometers in wavelength, and that we can catch using the so-called O3 filter. And the third popular one among astrophotographers is sulfur, which can emit photons of uh, 672 nanometers of wavelength, and that we can catch, of course, with the S2 filter. And then having three, three different distinct signals from the same portion of the sky lets us map them onto the red, green, and blue channels of a color image, allowing us to construct um, colorful narrowband images of the night sky. This is how it works. The hydrogen alpha signal is almost always the strongest, simply because there is just more hydrogen in the universe than there are other elements. All the hydrogen appeared in the universe when it cooled down enough after the Big Bang, like I mentioned, so that neutral atoms could exist at all. And in order to get heavier nuclei of atoms such as oxygen or sulfur, the universe has to fuse the lighter elements together, and that's what's happening inside stars. But that's a topic for another day and maybe another YouTube channel, to be honest. So what you should get out of this video is that quantum mechanics allows us to take beautiful images of space, even from light polluted areas, thanks to clever people who discovered how photon absorption and emission works in atoms of different elements. And we had other clever people that designed filters that can let us astrophotographers take advantage of it to make our pretty pictures. But it also led to other technologies such as spectroscopy that lets us mere humans probe the atmospheres of exoplanets and a lot of amazing and mind-blowing stuff. But now you know what hydrogen alpha light is and how it works and it's yet another reason to be in awe with the universe next time you're out photographing the night sky. And speaking of, I wish you clear skies and see you next time. Bye-bye.